Hello, and welcome to another virtual classroom experience. My name is Vivian Stewart, and this is another video in the segment of Navigating Through Pause. This video covers the assessment tool, which you will see how to submit an assignment, a discussion item, and a quiz. At this point, I'm about to share my desktop with you. We are now at the public website for the school. And as we have done in the other videos, I am about to access my online class. Using the blue banner at the top, I am selecting pause. This is the log on page for pause and I have a student account that I use for training purposes and I am now logging in. This should now bring me to the home page for pause. In order to access my courses, I am using the course selector at the very top. I am now selecting my course, which brings me to the home page for this particular course. As you can see, I have an email that I have not read. There is an update that I have not viewed yet, and I can access my updates from this area. We are looking at the assessment tool. The first thing that is listed is attendance. Your instructor may or may not be taking attendance. So in order for you to be successful in your online classes, you need to establish a schedule so that you can go in daily or every other day to check to see if there are any updates that you have not viewed if there are any announcements that have been posted that you have not seen, and that you are making sure that you are abiding by the due dates of all assignments, quizzes, and other um, activities that may be posted for you. Now, it is important that you prioritize your time. If you have maybe three courses that you're taking online, each of them will require a great amount of time. So um, make sure that you take into account that you may have a job, that you have things for your family that is very important, and that your class is just as important, okay? So um, instructors are required to report when students are not attending their courses on a regular basis, and this may affect your financial aid. So please make sure that you are um, actively engaged in your courses. Next, we have discussions listed. The purpose of the discussions is to let the instructors know if you actually understand the subject matter. So they may post a question to see how you feel about something that you have studied in the particular unit, or they may want to get your opinion on um, a work that you had to read to see if you gathered the same things from the piece of work that was pointed out in your unit. Or it may be just to um, see if you have really understood the subject matter. So now you will be graded on your discussion posts. Do not think that you could just post anything and that the instructor will accept it and give you points for it because it's not about how well you can write and how well you have for a gap that you could just post anything and expect to get credit for it. There will be some, um, some discussion forums that will be open at all times, and then there will be others that will open up on specific dates. So you will not have the ability to see what the um, discussion topic is in advance and work on it in advance. Okay, so keep in mind that things will open up on specific dates. Under general information, you will see we have course announcements. So this is an area that is available so that an instructor can post something for the entire class to see. It may be course related or it could be something that they are announcing that is happening on campus, an announcement to make sure that in case you would like to attend an activity, or it could be um, deadline dates that all students need to be aware of. There are some students who will not take advantage and read the course announcements because they may feel as though if it was that important, it will be sent to my email. 
I don't want you to take that stance. I want you to make sure that you read through every course announcement that is posted for you because it is posted for a reason. Need help, ask the instructor is something that will be open also. This is an area where a student can ask the instructor questions about assignments. If you are, if you need clarification on something, if you don't understand the assignment, you can post a question here. Now, not only will the instructor view it, but your other classmates will view it also. And you may find that a classmate may respond to you before the instructor will respond to you. The instructor has a lot of students that they're working with. They have several courses that they have. So the instructor is not online 24 hours a day waiting to respond to every question that is posted. And they're not able to respond in 10 to 15 minutes after something is posted. I believe the instructor will respond within a 48 hour period. So if you wait until the last minute, to try to ask questions about an open assignment, you may find that the instructor will not respond in time for you to complete an assignment before it actually closes. So a good practice is for you to look at the assignment when it opens up. If there are any questions that you have to ask, ask them early in the week, because if this will close on a Friday night, the instructor may not even be online in order to answer those last minute questions that you have. But as a classmate, you may tend to feel that um, you're the only one who don't understand an assignment, but you will be surprised there are other students who don't understand the assignments also. So this is a way for you all to help each other. If you can answer a question for your fellow classmates, please, um, do that. Please give encouragement to others who may not fully understand an assignment as you just may. I have one discussion item that is currently open, which is my introduction. You will be given the information concerning when it is available and also when it will actually close. I am now clicking on my active link, which is introduction, and this now opens in a new window. I have the ability to read through the information. I also see that I have guidelines, which tells me what the instructor is expecting from me. Please do not lose precious points because you do not follow your instructions. When I am ready to respond, I simply will click on start a new thread. I am supposed to enter my subject here, which can be the same subject for introduction, or you may want to enter your name or create your own title for this. Inside of the body, and this looks just like an email, you would actually post your answer here. Now, it is most important that you are aware that you have your review tools down at the very bottom, and the first one is for spell checking. As a college student, it is most important that you make sure that you go through spell check. It doesn't take you long. No college student should post anything and you have misspelled words. So please check your spelling before you post anything. When you have actually finished, you have an option that says subscribe to this thread. This is an option for you. You can either subscribe to this or not. One of the notification icons that you see at the very top of each page is for your descriptions, your subscriptions. So if you would like to be notified when there is a new posting, just simply subscribe to it and you will actually be notified when there is something new that has been posted. If you would like to add an attachment, you have that option here. And when you have finished, you simply click on post. Now, some instructors have it set up so that you will not see it posting from other students until you have actually posted something. This is so that you will not simply restate um, what the instructor has provided or that you will use somebody else's ideas as your own. The instructor wants to hear your ideas, how you feel about something, what your answers are. Instructors may also ask that you respond to maybe two other classmates to give them encouragements by letting them know that someone is actually reading their posting also. So please take these discussion items um, very seriously. Do not attempt to um, respond to one um, um, 
until you have actually gone through your lecture notes and you have a good idea of what the instructor wants from you. Going back to assessment, I want to come back to assignments. So let's go to quizzes. In order for the instructor to know if you have actually mastered the subject matter, you may have exams or various quizzes. So this is a listing of the different quizzes that will be taken in this particular class. You can see when they are available and when it will actually close. You would also see how many attempts you may have. So you may have multiple attempts. So if you don't do well the first time, you have the ability to go in and try it again. So my sample quiz is open. I'm simply clicking on my link. I have a description provided that I can read through. I have my quiz details, which lets me know how long I have to complete this quiz. And then I have my instructions. So before I actually start this quiz, just let me let you know that the best practice is to always review before a quiz. Never take a quiz when you are tired. Never take a quiz when you only have a short amount of time because you will find that you are actually rushing through and you may not do as well. I also want you to know that every quiz is not set up to where you are able to view the question and then go back and find the answers. You should be learning this information as you are going. So you should not always have to look up an answer. OK, so and you may not have time to do that. So at this point, I am starting my quiz. In your class, it may be set up to where you have multiple questions on a page. This quiz is actually set up to where there is one question on each page and there are only. So as I read through the first question, does this course require a textbook? And I will say yes. Now, of course, my eyes go directly to the blue button, which it shouldn't because this says submit the quiz. In order to go to my next question, I need to click on next page. And this is my confirmation. And I have my next question. And I now can go to next page. But at this point, I only want to answer two of my questions. So at this point, let me submit my quiz. This is my confirmation. And it tells me that I can either submit my quiz or I can go back to my questions. Now, I know that I did not answer um, questions three, four, and five, so they will be incorrect automatically. I am now submitting my quiz. And in some cases, you will get an automatic confirmation of how well you have done. I missed the first one. I got the second one correct, but I missed number three, four, and five because I did not answer those. So now if I only have one attempt and I only got one correct, this lets me know that I did not understand the subject matter very well and that on the next quiz, I need to do things differently so that I could get better points. So this is how you would actually um, attempt a quiz. Going back to assessment, the grades will help you get a good idea of how well you are doing in the course. So as you can see, I have a listing of all of the assignments, all of the discussions and the quizzes and even down to the final exam. It shows you the total amount of points that you can earn and as your instructor grades your various um, activities here, you will see on the top of this the points that you have actually gotten. So it kind of gives you an idea of how well you're doing. Going back to assessment. If there is a special assignment or project that you have to complete, the instructor will provide you with the rubric. The rubric will give you instructions concerning what is expected of you, how you should complete the assignment, and it will give you um, information on how you will be graded. So it is very important that you check your rubric, that you understand it, that you ask questions if you don't understand something, because your assignment will be graded based upon what the instructor has posted here. If you have received any awards based upon your achievement in the course, you can find them on the awards page.
Now going back up to assignments. The assignments are provided as practice work for you to further help you understand the subject matter. So on this page, there's a listing of all of the assignments. The ones that are in blue are still open. The others have specific days that they will open up. Okay. You will see your scores when the instructor has um, graded it. If there are um, feedbacks or comments that the instructor has provided for you that will be listed in this area as a link. And then you have your due dates. A good practice is to never wait until the last minute to work on an assignment because you may discover that you don't understand everything and it's too late to ask questions. Also, time is never on your side. You may find that your Wi-Fi has gone down or you may have technical difficulties with your computers. And the instructor is not obligated to allow you extra time to complete something because you have waited until the last minute to work on the assignment. So try to get into the practice of completing your assignments early or at least View the assignment, ask any questions that you need of the instructor earlier in the week. Okay, so in order to look at this particular assignment, I am clicking on the link that says Unit 2. I have my instructions that you need to make sure that you read through before you try to complete something. This is the actual Word document that I have. And at this point, let me just point out that I know that a lot of students are working from Chromebooks or you like using Google Docs a lot. Your instructors may encounter difficulties viewing your Google Docs, but there is a way to convert a Google Doc into a Word document. So if this is something you have never done before, I suggest that you try to locate a YouTube video that will show you how that is done. And this will make it a lot easier on your instructor and on you to submit your, um, your assignments using Microsoft Word applications. Now, I have already completed this particular assignment, okay, and I have it saved on my desktop. Some students prefer to save their information in um, OneCloud, OneDrive, or they prefer to save their information using a USB drive. So whichever works for you is fine. So since I know that I have already completed this, I will now select Add a File. Out of these two options, I saved it on my computer. I am selecting Upload. And I saved it on my desktop. Now, I received instructions that I need to change the name. The file needed to start with my last name. So as I scroll down, I'm looking for that file, which is here. And I am now selecting it and open. Now, Add. And now in order to send this to the instructor, I am now submitting it. And this is my confirmation that I have submitted it. And that is how you actually submit an assignment. Okay, so let me see, have I finished everything? This is everything under assessment. Always make sure that you log out. I am about to stop sharing my screen. So that brings me to the end of this video where we looked at how to submit an assignment, a discussion item, and a quiz. I hope that this has been helpful and that you would join us for other videos in this series. Thank you so much and have a great day.